Hi folks, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to take a look at the Genmitsu Prover XL 4030V2 CNC router machine from SaneSmart. This 3-axis machine has a rugged aluminum frame creating a total work volume of 400 by 300 by 110 millimeters, with ball screws and 76 millimeter closed loop NEMA 23 stepper motors on all axes to provide a max travel speed of up to 5,000 millimeters per minute with better stability and accuracy compared to the previous version. Most of the machine is shipped pre-assembled, so it's relatively quick and easy to put together after unboxing. The first step was to adjust the position of the rollers on the Y-axis rail so that they were the same distance from the back of the frame and lined up for installing the gantry. The ball screws on all axes have a nut on the end that can be used for adjustments with the provided nut driver. Once the gantry was fastened in place, I installed the Z-axis with the 400 watt spindle, then connected the X-axis motor. Next, I connected the wiring harness, which is pre-installed in a couple of drag chains to protect the cables when the machine is in use. Then I connected the cables to the controller. The cable ends are also labeled to indicate where they connect to, so there's no guesswork and no need to waste time reading a wiring diagram. To keep things simple for the first test, I'm chucking this 30 degree V-bit in the spindle to lightly score some text into the surface of a piece of MDF. I really like this hybrid wood and aluminum spoil board because it gives more options for clamping and you can use scraps to replace the wood when needed instead of using up a larger sheet of material. Once the workpiece was clamped in place, I turned the machine on and connected to my PC with the provided USB cable, then I installed the driver and open candle software to connect the machine for testing, both of which are in the USB drive that's provided with the machine. Candle is a free open source software for importing G-codes and controlling GRBL CNC machines. Once opened, I clicked settings to check the connection port and make sure that the machine was connected, then I clicked the home button to make sure it was working properly. Next, I open the test file that was provided and use the controls and candle to move the spindle to the starting position over the workpiece and then click the X, Y, and Z zero buttons to set the origin before clicking send to start engraving.
I misplaced the origin by a few millimeters, but the machine itself seemed to work fine, so I moved on to carving something more complicated. First, I need to be able to create a G-code to do it, and unfortunately, Candle doesn't have that ability. I personally use Easel Pro, which is an all-in-one browser-based software that you can connect to and control your machine with, similar to Candle, but it also has loads of tools to help you design your project and create the G-code automatically before sending it to your machine for processing. After opening Easel, I click the machine button at the top of the page to set up a new profile and connect the machine to the software. Easel has profiles set up for common models, and the Prover XL is one of them, but I don't see the V2 in the list, so I created a new profile for it by following the instructions to set up the specs and test the motors. This machine also comes with a Z probe for zeroing the Z axis, which you can set up while setting up the machine, or you can set it up later through the machine settings. When the machine is set up and connected, the carve button at the top right of the page turns from blue to green. As I mentioned, Easel has lots of features to help you create almost anything you want, from different material and end mill selections with presets to help you eliminate the guesswork if you're a beginner, to design tools that allow you to create shapes, vectors, and import images and 3D models for carving. I've already set up a project off-camera for this next test, which is a 3D relief of a northern pike carved out of white pine. Easel generates two separate G-codes for 3D carvings like this. The first is for roughing out the bulk of the material with a large bit to help decrease the processing time. The second G-code is for finishing the detail with a finer bit. As I mentioned in the previous video, I'm relatively new to CNC machining and my end mill options are limited at the moment. So I chose a 1 8 inch 2 flute flat end mill for roughing and a 30 degree V bit with a half millimeter radius round over on the tip for finishing. For roughing, I chose a feed rate of 60 inches per minute, a plunge rate of 9 inches per minute, a 50% step over, and a 0 0.05 inch cut depth per pass at 10,000 RPM. For finishing, I used a feed rate of 60 inches per minute, a plunge rate of 9 inches per minute, and a 6% step over. After the roughing process was done, I changed bits and clicked the carve button again to select the finished G-code and reset the origin for carving. The total processing time for both G-codes was a little over 12 hours, but it turned out really nice. Next, I wanted to try cutting some plastic, so I clamped a piece of PVC to the spoil board and set up the Genmitsu logo in easel to engrave with a 30 degree V bit like the first test. After the logo was engraved, I switched to a 1 8 inch end mill to cut a perimeter around the logo straight through the workpiece. Easel also has a tab feature that creates small tabs in the curve wherever you need them to hold the workpiece and keep it from jamming up after it's cut through. This took around 12 minutes to complete and had no issues.
Finally, I wanted to test how well it works soft metal, so I set up the same file to engrave and cut out of a piece of 1 8 inch thick aluminum plate. For engraving the logo, I used the same rounded 30 degree V bit with a slow feed rate of 5 inches per minute and a plunge rate of 1 inch per minute to help keep the tip from breaking, as well as a cut depth per pass of 0 0.005 inches and a spindle speed of 10,000 RPM. For cutting, I used a feed rate of 10 inches per minute and a plunge rate of 3 inches per minute and a depth per pass of 0 0.03 inches at 10,000 RPM. In total this took around an hour and a half to finish and it turned out really good. In the end I decided to use a 90 degree V bit to chamfer the edge as well. So that's it for this video folks. My impression of this machine so far is pretty good. It's not cheap, but it's a solid design that's more than capable of doing what it's advertised to do. The build quality is the very best, and I had no mechanical or software issues while using it whatsoever. I would like to upgrade the spindle for more power and test if it can handle cutting steel, and the machine did come with a bracket for fitting a larger spindle too. But even as it is, it works great for cutting most common materials and seems like a good fit for both hobbyists and small business owners. I put a link in the video description in case you're interested in getting one for yourself. Let me know what you think in the comments, and if you enjoyed the video then let me know with a thumbs up and subscribe so you won't miss the next one. Until then, thanks for watching and take care folks.